Hello and welcome to the Black Hat Bushcraft Channel. This afternoon I'm back out in the woods on my family's land and I want to get my trap line back up and running. Some of you may remember a video I posted back before Christmas. I had set out some metal cage traps and I was actually having some really good luck with those traps. I had them out for about 10 days consecutively. I checked them every morning and over the course of 10 days I caught nine opossums, one raccoon, two feral cats, and a squirrel. So I thought I was doing pretty good with those traps. Um, Christmas came and things got really hectic there with year end and so forth. And today I wanted to get back out here and get these traps baited up and see what else we can do with them. Uh, as I mentioned in my other video, I'm not a seasoned trapper. I haven't done a lot of work with steel traps and the like. Um, these cage traps are just something that I had in storage in my building for just in case. And this year I decided to get them out and just experiment with them in the woods. And I've, I feel like I've done a good job on spotting sign and setting traps in good locations so today I wanted to come back out get these things baited up we'll check them in the morning and see if I catch anything I thought I'd bring you guys along for getting the traps cleaned up and baited up let's see what happens guess what the weatherman said no precipitation today got a little rain a little sleep mixed in weatherman was wrong again All right, so I have my first cage trap right here behind me and I have it set in a good spot along this little creek right here. There's a deer crossing right here and right here. You can tell that the path is worn down. And a lot of times if you sit near deer crossings or paths that deer are using, that, that area will be beaten down. That's the path of least resistance for other animals to travel. The last time I had this trap baited right here, I caught a raccoon, so it makes sense to me to continue to set here. It's been a couple of weeks since that time, so I'm gonna rebait this trap and uh, hopefully I'll get another raccoon right here. Now, one of the little tricks I found about these cage traps is sometimes the animals will fiddle with the trap and not go in. They might approach the trap from around the back and try to paw the bait out. And I even had one last time to turn the trap on its side, like push the trap over, which of course sprung the door. And then he was able to get some of the bait out of the trap without ever entering it. So one thing that I'm working on here is I'm staking the trap down here. I'm just driving a small little stick down into the ground. And I'm gonna do that on either side of this trap. Just going through the mesh of the grape It's not something I've spent any time on as far as carving out a nice steak. But what that does for me now is it makes that trap a lot more sturdy. It's going to be a lot harder for that animal to turn this trap over with those stakes driven down like that. And I made sure to do that with the door closed so I know that these stakes are not interfering with this trap in any way. I don't think he's going to turn it over. I've also got it wedged in this spot here with this um, grapevine coming up beside it, uh, muscadine vine. So I don't think this trap's going anywhere. And now I know that animal's going to have to enter that trap to get the bait out. You can see a better view of what I did there with the stakes. You can see this one coming on the other side, this one here. I've got one securing it on the side here. And then I have this uh, vine here securing that thing on the back side. And these raccoons can be pretty slick, so not going to let them steal my bait. So I've just got some dry cat food here, and I'm going to place that stuff back here in the back of the trap. Just make sure there's enough that he can smell it. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit on the outside of the trap to maybe catch his nose. Just to add a little extra scent, got some sardines here in water. Put some of that stuff there. Pour a little bit on the outside across this trail. Throw a sardine or two down in here. That ought to do it. So the table is set. This is the local buffet for my opossum and raccoon friends out here. I'm going to put the safety latch on and what I'm going to do is just 
put a little natural brush over this trap. All right, so I've gone ahead and added a little natural debris to my trap here. And a lot of people might say that that doesn't matter. Um, in my mind, it can't hurt. Maybe it helps to camouflage a little bit of the scent of me handling the trap. And if nothing else, maybe it encourages the animal to approach the path of least resistance through the door to get to the bait. Um, anyway, it just seems like it makes sense to me to camouflage the trap a little bit. So I take the time to do it. It's not a big deal. The last step is I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit more of that cat food, just a few pieces out here to help draw the animal in off the trail. And the most important thing, never forget to release that safety hook. Otherwise, all this is for nothing. All right, we got five more traps to do the same thing to, and the sun's getting low in the sky. So I'm going to get started. All right, so my next trap is back here a ways and this area is really wet right now we've had a ton of rain so everything's kind of marshy back here as you can see there's an area back here where a tree fell and where the tree fell the roots came up and it created um, almost what looks like a little debris hut and multiple times i found raccoon scat over there as you can see this place is just swamped out over here I haven't caught a raccoon here, even though I set this trap for about five or six nights in a row. But I have had stuff mess with the trap. This is the one that got turned over. So I'm gonna make sure that I secure that trap really well today. And hopefully, I'll get a raccoon. There's our spot. So when I left this trap here, I did not leave it all tilted up like that. So I'm wondering if just the scent of the bait that I used last time, made an animal come over here and mess with this cage because it was definitely not left like that and i know nobody has most likely been in this area of the woods this very private area here this is that uh part of the tree that fell like i was saying it created what looks like a little debris hut here but multiple times i found fresh raccoon scat up here on top of this thing there's actually some up there right now so i know that the raccoons come up here there's some runny scat right there. Something had to run. But yeah, multiple times I've found that up here. And so I know this is a good spot. Probably another good spot to set something would be right there on that log, crossing over that swampy water. That looks like a great site to set something. But anyway, today what I'm gonna do is set this trap right back in this location. And I'm gonna pin this thing down real good, make sure nothing can turn this trap over like it did last time. Hopefully, we'll get a raccoon. That feels much more secure. That ground is soft, so there's a little give, but that trap's not gonna roll over. Don't wanna forget the secret ingredient. The raccoon, I love fish. And I keep saying raccoon, but there's a good chance that I'll get a opossum in this trap. Probably as much as a raccoon. Pour a little bit of that juice once again. This is the same can from the other trap. help add some scent and then from there I'm just gonna come back and just like before just try to camouflage it a little bit maybe unnecessary but I just kind of like doing it all right so this strap is set all I've got to do is release the safety hook which I'm gonna do right now and if all goes well tomorrow morning We'll have a raccoon sitting in there it's very likely that we'll have an opossum if we have anything but we can hope for a raccoon and we'll see what tomorrow brings all right so my next trap location is across this soybean field here on this point and there's a little washout down in the middle of this field and it all kind of drains out to a little creek that's down in the woods and at that point it's like a super highway for animals there's all kinds of tracks crossing there so we're gonna go over there and get a cage set. It's probably hard to see on camera, but look at that game trail coming through these soybeans. That's definitely not me doing that. I'm just following the game trail. Man, that's like a super highway cutting across this bean field. And 
you can see I mean, they're just tracking through here it's mostly deer but there are many other animals that are traveling those deer paths because I see the tracks the possums and the raccoons uh, some canines and even some felines which I think are just feral cats but a lot of stuff going on in the soybean field for sure all right so this is where that washout begins and you can see you know that sun is harsh but right here in the corner where the big field and the long field meet it's kind of a longer skinnier field right there when those two fields come together we have this washout we had a ton of rain yesterday but you can still see you got all kinds of tracks coming through here and it rained hard here yesterday so these are tracks from probably last night or this morning Otherwise, they would be washed away. A lot of the tracks I saw yesterday were washed away. But you can see through here, there's just tons of deer activity. And they really like this, uh, this washout here between the fields. You can see here some nice tracks. That's who we're after right there. It's encouraging. So anyway, the spot that we're heading right now is right at the end of this washout where it meets the woods. And I definitely say of all the traps we're setting, this one is most likely to hit tomorrow. I definitely think we have good chances down here. Man, this is some, some big prints right there. You can see the cool thing about this is in this washout you got one going and it looks to me like the same animal coming back i mean it could be two different animals but you got tracks going and coming so chances are he goes out and he comes back that's my guess we'll find out let's get the trap set all right so this is the transition between the washout and the wood line you can see just inside here where I've got that cage and there's a little creek that runs through back here it's more of a drainage area but I know the animals walk that area and probably get water from there because there's no other standing water in this area unless they're just drinking out of puddles and stuff so that's an area that the animals would frequently go to to get water I'm sure and this is a spot that I've caught just about every time I set this trap I normally catch something so it's probably our best chance of an animal in the morning. Let's get this thing set. So I've gone ahead and got the uh, safety latch off and I've got the trap baited really well. And I've poured some of that sardine water out over here, sprinkled a little bit of cat food across the trail. Hopefully that'll bait them in and we'll have an animal here in the morning. This is a good spot. All right, so I've gone ahead and set two other smaller cages and I baited those with peanut butter and I apologize, I didn't film that part. It's getting later in the day and I just wanna get these traps set and get out of this area so they can do their thing. Of course, I will be back first thing in the morning. I will bring you guys along with me and we will check all six traps and hopefully with any luck, we'll have some beautiful animals to look at, at least something to look at. While I'm out here, I'll probably cook up some breakfast in the morning. Uh, for me, it's gonna be a long night waiting with excitement to see what tomorrow brings. For you guys, this is gonna be very quick. So stick with me and we'll come back and check these traps tomorrow. Welcome to day two on this trap line adventure and I came out extra early this morning and I started filming and I went from trap one nothing trap two three four five and six and we got skunked and by that I don't mean we caught a skunk we caught nothing 
All right, and I had a feeling that might happen. That's what trapping is. You're trapping, you don't always catch. Otherwise, we call it catching, right? Just like fishing. All right, so what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna fortify my traps a little bit. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna add some things around the trap to help create more interest. I've got a bottle of maple syrup, so I'm gonna go and spread some syrup around, add some scent to the woods. And the three smaller traps I set that I baited with peanut butter, I'm gonna go back today and add apple. Every time I put apples in those traps, I always seem to catch something. I'm really targeting rabbit with that smaller trap and hopefully raccoons or opossums in the bigger traps. Sometimes, last time I got a raccoon in the small trap, so you just never know. But what I'm gonna do is go back and add apples to the smaller traps and I'm gonna create more interest and create more scent by adding some maple syrup. And then hopefully tomorrow morning, day three, we'll have an animal. We're gonna give it our best shot. Let's go fortify our traps right now. All right, so this is trap number one. This is one of the smaller cage traps. And I've got a little bit of peanut butter back in this trap, but I'm gonna put some of these apples down in here too. I'm gonna be careful not to mess with the trigger. Make sure that those apples don't get up under that trigger. The last time I baited this trap with apples, I had a possum in it. So that's good to come back and reproduce what worked last time. I should have done that yesterday, honestly. All right, now I've got some maple syrup and I'm just gonna bring that across this trail here. And now I'm just gonna run a trail out here to the path to add some good scent. And that should help draw animals into the trap if they're following that maple syrup smell. On the trap too. So while I was taking a short break, I wanted to have a quick discussion on why I'm choosing to use these cage traps. And the number one and most prominent reason why is because I already have these things on hand. Some time back, uh, I decided it would be a good idea to have some of these cages out in the shop just in case I need them. Uh, I live in a suburban area with neighbors and they have pets and things like that, but it's nothing for me to look in my yard at any given time and see one to two rabbits out in the yard. They come through our yard all the time. And so just kind of being of the mindset that one day I may need to trap those rabbits for food, those cages make sense in that environment. They would make a perfect, easy trap to use. And at the same time, if I were to catch my neighbor's cat, which I have done, um, I can release that cat unharmed. So it allows me to trap selectively without harming animals. Naturally, this year, when I wanted to uh, kind of get into trapping and, and start to learn more about uh, my area, my, my family land here, uh, it made sense just to take the traps out that I had. I do have on hand quite a few Kana bear traps too, but those are killing traps. So if you set those and you get an animal in it, the animal's dead, that's it. Um, you don't have a chance to release a non-target species. Uh, so using the cage traps allows me to come out here on our family's land, which is not that big of a piece of property, and trap animals and learn more about what it takes to trap them and what animals we have in our area without hurting that animal population. I can release these animals unharmed, and again, that doesn't harm the population here. So if the time comes where I really need to trap those animals for food, hopefully we'll have plenty here on this piece of land. Also, at this time, I have just a freezer full of meat, more than we can probably eat, so I definitely don't need to trap for food at this time. So it makes sense to me to, to practice trapping and learn those skills and learn what it takes to use those traps successfully, but release the animals since they're unneeded at this time. Another advantage of these cage traps is, let's say you're using traditional traps like footholds or, or live catch traps. When you catch an animal, if you don't want to dispatch it at that time and have to clean the animal at that time, you can put them in one of these cages and save them, just give them food and water until the time comes that you want to uh, dispatch that animal and then you have it available. There's the saying, live food never spoils. So these cages give you that option once you catch an animal in say a foothold trap or, or something like that. 
Uh, so they're good pieces of gear to have on hand. Just be aware if you use cage traps, I think the animals are a little bit skittish with them because it doesn't look like the natural environment. They can tell that there's something unusual about it. But if you bait it well and you, you uh, entice the animal to come in, as you can see, uh, you can catch animals because I've caught quite a few this year. So just a quick discussion on why I'm using these cage traps because I know a lot of people choose to use other types of traps. I own quite a few Kana bears, but again, um, I, I just didn't want to kill the animals this year because I just don't need them. So anyway, just my thoughts on cage traps. Take it for what it's worth. All right, so I've gone ahead and fortified my traps. I've made sure that the bait is freshened up. I've added apples to those smaller traps. I've put maple syrup out. I've done everything that I know how to do to increase our chances of catching an animal. It's early in the day, so I'm gonna go ahead and get out of this area, not make any more noise, hopefully not add any more scent to the area. And if all goes well, if we're a little lucky, hopefully we'll get an animal or two in the trap tonight. So I'm gonna get out of here and I will see you guys on day three tomorrow morning. and welcome to day three on this little trap line adventure and I have high hopes for today. The reason I say that is on day one when I came out and reset and rebated my traps it was a little later in the afternoon. I had to work early in the day and so I didn't get out until later and I knew that when I came and baited the traps late in the day I was going to be rambling around making noise in the woods plus my scent was fresh so on day two I was kind of hopeful but I didn't really expect to catch anything. Yesterday I came back and fortified those traps, made sure the bait was good, added the maple syrup in, and I got away from this area early in the day so it had time to sit for the scents to settle, things like that. And so I'm much more hopeful today that we should have an animal in a trap. Maybe we'll have a couple, we'll see. Uh, maybe we'll have six. If, just to refresh, if you remember, we had three smaller cages and three larger cages. So I'm hopeful for raccoon. That was my goal, catch a raccoon. So we'll see uh, what we get. and. I will bring you guys along as I walk up on the traps and we'll be surprised together. Cross your fingers and let's hope for something good. All right, so we're coming up onto trap location number one here on this water fur between the two fields, the high field and the low field. And this is one of those smaller cage traps. Yeah, the door's wide open. All right, this is trap number one, a bust. The key is to find out if we did anything wrong. And I don't know how well you guys can see with this lighting, but the apples are still back in the trap. Trigger's still set. So it doesn't look like the trap malfunctioned or that we missed an animal. It just looks like nothing's actually been over here and messed with it. So trap number one, still set. We'll leave it like it is. Hope for tomorrow. Move on to trap two. This is that washout between the two fields. And right at the end of that washout is where trap number two is. Not really seeing any fresh raccoon tracks, just fresh deer tracks down in here. I can tell some of the deer tracks are fresh because they're on top of my boot tracks here. And some of those older raccoon tracks down in that little washout area. But nothing fresh here. Well, hopefully that means that instead of walking out here last night, he got caught in my trap. <laughs> so it could be a good sign that we don't see fresh tracks. All right, here we are, and the door is open. Ah, trap number two is a bust. All right, so let's take a look at the trap, just make sure that I didn't do something wrong. And I don't know how well you guys can see it, but the bait is all still there, trap triggers up. It looks like nothing's been in here. And on day two, we had a little bit of 
pawing around the back of this trap where probably that cat that I caught before at this trap uh, probably dug around here. It could have been one of the many opossums I've caught here too that got wise to the trap. So I laid all this dead fall around here just to try to keep them from doing that. Encouraged them to go in the trap to get the food. But it looks like nothing's bothered any of this just like I left it. So we'll leave it again for another day. So I will be honest with you guys, not catching something at the washout does concern me a little bit because that's probably one of my number one spots where I've caught the most animals. So I was really hopeful that we'd have something there. But the good news is I still have four more traps in the woods. So I'm gonna be hopeful. Let's get in there and check the last four. As kids, we always called these things sheep burrs. I think they're actually called cockle burrs. They are mighty hateful. If you don't have these in your area, count yourself lucky. They love my wool clothing. Every one of them tries to stick. Hate these things. All right, we're here at trap location number three. And if you remember, this was that little game trail here. I'm gonna walk around the side here. If you remember, we put syrup out on that path. I'm gonna try to stay out of that. Uh oh, the lid is down. I can't see an animal in there. All right, let's go check this trap close. All right, so I've come in for a closer look here on this trap and there's definitely not an animal inside. And I can see that the bait is all still intact. Um, so the only thing I can guess is maybe the wind might have set the trap off. Possibly something like a mouse got in there that could fit through, uh, you know, the wiring of the, of the trap. Um, but overall, I don't see anything I did wrong. Um, just looks like the trap might have malfunctioned. So we'll open this thing back up, set the trigger, and hope for a better day tomorrow. See what I mean? Hate these things. They do love wool. Hence why we call them sheep burrs, I guess. All right, I'm almost here to trap location number four. And I can already see the trap as it opens up to the trail. And it is indeed wide open. Uh, I'm feeling discouraged now, guys. Fourth trap and nothing. And I can see the bait back down in there. Some apples in there. It looks like nothing's bothered this trap at all. No scratching around the side of the trap. Just nothing. Ah, only two more traps. Two more chances. Let's go check those. All right, so this is that little creek here, which is really more of just kind of a drainage canal. It holds water most of the time this time of year. And I know that the animals walk down this canal quite a bit. That trap is right behind this tree, and we're going to find out together whether it was successful. Oh, man, I can already see in that cage, and I can see it's empty. Trigger's still up, and the bait is still intact in there. I was really hopeful about this trap, but it looks like nothing has even tampered with it. <sighs> we only got one shot left, guys, and that is back here in these woods a ways. I'm starting to be a little bit skeptical about the day. Day three may be a bust as well. All right, let's get back there and check it. All right, so I'm working my way back in the woods here. And I'm really trying to hold on to hope that maybe we caught something with six traps out. This being the third day, it would be really nice to have at least one animal. But if not, let's stick with this. I was really hoping for a raccoon my target and this is probably the trap that would give me one of the best shots on that you guys are literally gonna sit oh the doors down the doors down let's hope that it's not like the last trap with the door down being empty oh it looks like there's a coon in there there's a raccoon in there I can see him right now Try not to startle it too bad. There is a raccoon in that trap. Hot dog. There he is. That dude looks nice and cozy in there. He's pulled up a bunch of pine straw somehow into that cage. And he's got himself a nice cozy bed in there. 
The cool thing about these cage traps is the concept of live food never spoils. So now that he's in that cage, I can carry that cage with me and dispatch that raccoon when I want to. Now my goal in this is not to dispatch the raccoon, but I'm going to release him uh, as I don't really need a raccoon right now. But this is more about practicing and knowing whether or not this concept works. And I'd say it does. This is the second one I've caught out in this area. It's very mild mannered. right for that log just like I called it <laughs> so I'm really excited that trap number six no less uh, actually caught an animal and our target species at that if you remember when I set that trap in that location I had found some raccoon scat up on top of that little hill that mound from where the tree fell over I had seen some tracks in that area and I felt confident that that's what we would catch and indeed we caught a raccoon so I'm really excited about that we definitely held out the suspense because I literally checked all five of the other traps that is the furthest one away and that trap number six is the one it produced so uh, I'm excited about that so if you think about it, the traps were really only in the woods for two nights. It was on the second night that we caught that raccoon and of course able to film it now on the third day. Um, I feel confident that on the first night I probably wouldn't catch anything just because I was in the woods kind of late and rambling around and that probably alerts the animals to you know uh, some unusual activity plus my scent was probably lingering so I felt a lot better about night two and of course that's when we actually finally caught an animal. I'm going to leave all these traps set and uh, hopefully we'll catch some more animals over the next several days. Um, of course this will be the end for this video but if something really exciting happens you guys will see it and hear about it. In the meantime, I've worked up an appetite and it's time to get out my firebox stove, my Trangia alcohol stove, and cook up some hearty oatmeal here in the woods. Let's get started on that right now. So what I have here is my 32 ounce stainless water bottle. I have it wrapped with a Wazoo Survival uh, tracking bandana and just a little slap bracelet. This thing is really cool for measuring tracks and uh, you can just keep it right on your wrist like that if you want, or you can just keep it in your kit, but it just gives you a handy way to measure things. And then this little bandana just has some common tracks on it, so you can use it to help identify things. All right, and then what I have here is my 1100 milliliter titanium bush pot, which comes from Self-Reliance Outfitters. This is the Pathfinder model. And inside of that pot, it does come with this little mesh stuff sack. Inside of this pot, I have my Trangia alcohol stove, and my firebox nano and they nest perfectly down in this pot this is a perfect pot for just a solo trip like today to cook up some oatmeal coffee or stowaway gourmet those types of meals um, this is perfect for that so this is what i carry in my pack most of the time and today i'm going to make up a cup of coffee and some oatmeal and this stove will be the perfect way to do that so this stove is perfect to use with the trangia I just have my fuel bottle here, which makes this easy to fill. And it's going. Now we wait. Once again, if you guys are interested in the gear that you've seen me use, all of those items will be linked down below in the description box. I have several affiliate pages that you can purchase this gear from. Of course, if you use my affiliate links, I do benefit from that. It is a small percentage that comes back to me, but it is at no additional cost to you. So if you use those links, I greatly appreciate it. Many of you have, and I thank you for that support. 
So while I was piddling around with some other stuff, I wasn't really watching my stove closely, I realized that because of this cold breeze that's blowing, I was losing a lot of heat. So I set my stove down here on the ground beside this log and hope that'll block some of that wind and help it heat up a little faster. I wanna go ahead and show you what I'm cooking up this morning. I have in this food tin just some old fashioned Quaker oats. And I love oatmeal. It's a healthy grain and a good carbohydrate and an easy one to prepare in the woods. In the second tin, I've mixed a bunch of ingredients to go in my oatmeal. And what I have here is just an individual serving of honey. This is one you can buy at your local grocery store. And uh, in here I have chopped up some pecans or pecans, depending on where you're from. I call it pecan. Walnut, cranberries, raisins, and pumpkin seeds. So also a lot of other healthy ingredients to put in there. It looks funny because I have just put a bunch of cinnamon in here and it's all mixed up together in my pack. So great ingredients to go inside of a healthy grain. That's a winner for me. And on a nice cold day, this will be a good warm meal that I can eat. And all of it can go together in this one bush pot so it, it makes for a simple breakfast. So we got a cold front blowing in and now that I'm sitting still, I've switched out my hat. But I have here my little coffee bag and I have a lot of different options in there. And today I'm going for simple. I just have this Copico three in one. I think my water is about hot enough that I can make coffee. So I'm gonna keep this real simple. instant coffee that stuff's really good so I'm gonna mix in my oatmeal here and I definitely won't use all of this tin about half or so and I'm gonna use about half of what I have here I'm gonna keep the honey out might have used a little more than half of the good stuff there Mix that stuff in real good. Then I'm going to set it back on the heat and let it simmer for a minute. And then we'll add the honey as the last step. All right, so let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, that's looking good right there. Starting to thicken up real nice. Secret ingredient good raw and unfiltered honey. I'm a big fan of honey and if I'm going to sweeten something I prefer to use that if I can. That makes a great woodsman's breakfast right there. Yeah, that stuff looks right now. Alright so this is going to be a good hot meal out here on the trap line on a cold day. I'm looking forward to this. As always got to give thanks. And with that, of course I'm going to say it's delicious. Does anybody ever cook food at camp and not rave about how good it is? I'll be honest with you, it's not bacon and eggs, but it's really good. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and eat my breakfast and drink my coffee. But I want to thank you guys for sticking around for this three-day trap line adventure. I know it's kind of a different type of trap line. Uh, it's me learning and just bringing you along as I experiment and just try to figure out what works in my area. Later on, I'll probably expand uh, into some different types of traps. Uh, probably we'll wait until next year. It's late in the season this year, so next year I'll probably ramp it up a little bit but in the meantime i'm really satisfied with my first year and my results uh, with the animals as i've already told you i've caught i'm pretty happy with that considering i've probably well i had 10 days of trapping and then i did uh three days now so 13 days and i've caught um about 13 animals so not too bad um, anyhow i want to thank you guys for coming along for this video i hope you have enjoyed it 
Uh, I ask you guys to check out a friend of mine. His name is Anthony Powers, and his channel is Pooter Stomper. He's a fellow instructor at the Pathfinder School. He's a far more knowledgeable trapper than I am. He's a really good guy, super nice guy, great trapper, great content. He does a lot of overnighters on his channel. Just a fantastic channel. I can't recommend it to you enough. So if you're not a subscriber of Pooter Stomper, my friend Anthony, please go and give him a sub. Let him know I sent you. So I hope you guys are doing well. I hope that you're having a good 2021 so far. May it be a better year for all of us. We can only hope. And I hope to be talking to you with many more videos uh, this year. I look forward to hopefully growing the channel and continuing to provide you guys with content. And I hope you'll stick around for it. So until that next video, you guys take care, be safe, and as always, God bless. Hello and welcome to day four on this three day trap line adventure. And originally I had planned this video to span over the course of three days. However, this morning my daughter and I came out to check the trap line as we have to do every morning. And prior to uploading my video to YouTube, we caught another animal. So I thought I would bring you guys along. I am at trap location number three, which was the first trap that you actually saw me install on day one. And we finally got a catch on this thing. So I thought I'd put this clip in here and let you guys see our second catch. It is a raccoon. Let's take a look at him right now. All right, so you'll probably recognize this location here, which was just off the side of this little drainage creek. And just behind this tree was our trap. And of course, when I came back here this morning, I saw we once again have a nice little nest pulled up in the trap. And there we have us a nice healthy raccoon in there. This one I think is quite a bit bigger than the other one, uh, at least a little fatter. It's definitely got his winter coat on. Just a beautiful animal. See that nice ring tail. Just a beautiful animal in there. I was very excited to get one more for the video. And of course I'm going to let this guy go just like I did the last one. See he's made himself at home and quite cozy in there. But very happy to get one more catch before the end of the trap line adventure here. So I'll go ahead and get this guy released and uh, we'll move on. We've got one more trap to check. Tell all your buddies about the buffet now. <laughs>